Welcome to the March 2024 edition of the Growing Chatham podcast. I'm Tiffany Hancock for North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center. This month, I have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. Let's start with our general updates from our office and other Chatham County partners. Chatham County government offices, including North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center, will be closed on Friday, March 29th for Good Friday. Hey parents, bring the kids out to the Chatham County Parks and Recreation's Extreme Spring Fling. Coming up Saturday, March 16th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Central Carolina Community College at the Pittsburgh campus. Community members are invited to enjoy the many different activities that the Extreme Spring Fling has to offer. There will be festival-style activities and multiple other community organizations hosting other spring-themed activities, including the Maple View Mobile Ice Cream truck. Starting at 11 a.m., there will be field games, including a sack race and water balloon toss. The egg hunts will begin at noon and they will wrap up the event. You can find out more by visiting the Growing Chatham newsletter and clicking on the link. Do you know what's happening on March 23rd? You really don't want to miss this exciting day. It's the Chatham County Spring Ag Fest at the Chatham County Agricultural and Conference Center, 1192 U.S. 64 West Business, Pittsburgh. This family-friendly event offers a day of agricultural learning in Chatham County. And here's what you can expect. Livestock demonstrations at the Livestock Arena, free pony rides for the kids, the North Carolina Forestry Service showcasing the importance impressive Smokey Bear, a 4-H kid zone with engaging agricultural activities. Don't miss Farmer Ed's debut with his magic show, Ready, Set, Grow, at the Chatham County Spring Ag Fest, sponsored by Chatham County Farm Bureau, plus the Chatham County Farm Bureau Virtual Combine. There will be exhibitors and vendors both indoors and outdoors. And if you get hungry during AgFest, don't worry. There will be several food trucks available to satisfy those cravings. Chatham Transit will provide shuttle services from three locations. The Justice Center, Central Carolina Community College, and the Papa Park in Pittsburgh off of Salisbury Street. As AgFest ends at 3 o'clock, the fun continues with a family event in Pittsburgh at the Pop-Up Park and surrounding areas. After a day of excitement, enjoy a meal at one of Pittsburgh's diverse restaurants. So save the date for a fulfilling day in Pittsburgh on March 23rd, starting at 10 a.m. with the Chatham County Spring AgFest, followed by more fun at the Pop-Up Park and dinner at a local restaurant. After such a lively day, a good night's sleep is well-deserved for every one in the family. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to learn more about the Farmland Preservation Program. Andrew Waters from Chatham County Soil and Water provides details about the Farmland Preservation Program in Chatham County, so you can check out his video by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 324. Okay, we're moving on to our 4-H section. Join the Master Gardener volunteers at Spring Break Camp. Looking for something local to do for Spring Break? Join some of our enthusiastic Extension Master Gardener volunteers at their Nature at Home Junior Master Gardener Spring Break Camp. During Chatham County Schools 2024 Spring Break, the Master Gardeners are hosting a fun-filled week at the Chatham County Agricultural Center, 1192 U.S. 64 West Business Suite 400 Pittsburgh. This spring break camp will run from April 1st through April 5th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. every day. The ages are 8 years old to 14 years old and the cost is $75. So come on now and learn about plants, insects, soil, ecology, and more through games and hands-on activities. Think planting butterfly nets and making your own pizza. The theme this year is Nature at Home. Campers will take away ideas that can be implemented at home. A field trip to the North Carolina Botanical Gardens is a much anticipated part of the camp activity, so wear comfortable, weather appropriate clothing, and closed toe shoes to be prepared for an awesome week. Enrollment space is limited, so you don't want to wait. Go ahead and sign up by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter under the 4 H section. 
Coming up in April is the 4-H Photography Workshop. Join Chatham County 4-H as we learn more about the art of photography. From Michael Stano, award-winning photography artist and member of the Chatham County Artist Guild. Registration through 4-H Online is required to participate in the engaging and interactive three-part workshop taking place on April the 9th, 16th, and 23rd. Each workshop session will be held at the Chatham County Agricultural and Conference Center on the North Carolina Cooperative Extension side. The workshops will run from 3.15 p.m. until 4.15 p.m. on the scheduled Tuesdays. 4-H members must be nine years old or older to join us. For more information, visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. 4-H STEM Day rocked the house. It was STEM-tastic. The 4-H crew put on a full-day program with some of our 4-Hers ages 7 to 13. We did some circuit work, made paper airplane designs to test, and built some super sweet bridges to see if we could help our Lego people cross. During the day, we took time to make our own personal pizzas to enjoy for lunch. These are just a few things we do in 4-H programs. If you are interested in signing your child up for 4-H, just visit 4-H online today. 4-H accepts children ages 5 to 18. To learn more, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing chatham 324. Let's head out to our home gardens with Matt Jones. Here are some updates that he has shared with us this month. Native and Invasive Plants of Creeks and Streams webinar. This webinar will review some of the best native trees, shrubs, and herbaceous perennials for streams and creeks. We'll examine each species' ecological function and horticultural value, as well as resources for wildlife-friendly landscaping from North Carolina State Extension. Identification and management of invasive species near riparian areas will also be explored. Reserve your spot today by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Make your garden a haven for moths. Moths are the unsung heroes of plant pollination. On a worldwide scale, there are twice as many species of pollinating moths as there are bees. And there are six times as many pollinating moths as there are pollinating butterfly species. Moths don't get the respect that they deserve for the services they provide plants. Moreover, moth larvae, the caterpillars, are important food sources for songbirds, and adult moths are important for food for our native bats. The Extension Gardener Plant Toolbox makes it easy to find moth-related plants for your garden. Just type moth friendly or moth caterpillar host in the search box to see a list of plants that will attract moths. You can read more in the growing Chatham newsletter by clicking on the link. This month, Matt shares a video with us from North Carolina State University Fertilizer an Introduction. You can catch this video in the growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 324. Now moving on to Sustainable Ag with Debbie Roos. Here are some updates that she has shared this month. Webinar on sales tax exemptions on farm products and inputs coming up March 4th, 2024. The Chatham County Center of North Carolina Cooperative Extension is conducting a farm tax webinar on March 4th about sales tax exemptions for farmers as part of a series on farm tax issues. Producers of farm products are generally exempt from collecting and remitting sales taxes on those items, but what about value-added items? such as meat cuts, jams, pickles, baked goods, flour bouquets. To be exempt, what registration must I make? What records must I keep to prove any exemptions are available to me? Where do I remit any sales taxes I'm obligated to collect? Producers may also qualify for an exemption from paying sales taxes on inputs they purchase. But how do you qualify and stay qualified? How do you sign up? Do beginner farmers qualify? To find out the answers to these questions, Join us for a free webinar on March 4th. Pre-registration is required and you can find the link along with additional information in the growing Chatham newsletter. Coming up is a webinar on using REAP grants to fund energy improvements on your farm. North Carolina Cooperative Extension of Chatham County is conducting a webinar on March 12th. 
for farmers interested in renewable energy and energy efficiency projects and getting grants to help fund them. Reap the benefits of energy improvements on your farm using Reap grants to fund renewable energy systems and energy efficiency improvements. Again, this is March 12th, 2024 from 6 until 8 p.m. We have a great panel of speakers to talk about the REAP program and how it can benefit your farm. How energy efficiency audits help save energy, renewable energy projects on the farm, and how to get REAP funding application support, tax incentives for energy improvement, and successful on-farm REAP energy projects. Visit Cooperative Extension's Growing Small Farms website for a detailed agenda, speaker bios, and a link to register for this free webinar. That link is available in the Growing Chattel newsletter. The 2024 Southeastern U.S. Vegetable Crop Handbook is now online. The Southeastern Vegetable Extension Workers Group has just released the 25th edition of the Southeastern U.S. Vegetable Crop Handbook. The handbook represents a joint effort among extension specialists and researchers from 12 land-grant universities in the U.S. who work in the area of vegetable production. This handbook comprises of up-to-the-minute information developed from research and extension projects conducted across the Southeast. It contains the information that you need to manage your vegetable crops, including which varieties to plant, planting dates, fertilizer recommendations, cover crop selection, and conservation tillage options. Pest Pesticide selection, fertigation, post-harvest handling, alternative pest management tools, as well as many other topics. Visit Cooperative Extension's Growing Small Farms website to view or download the handbook. That link is available in the Growing Chatham newsletter. It's that time of year, spring chores in the pollinator garden. Sustainable agriculture agent Debbie Roos discusses the major chores she and her volunteers tackle in March to get Cooperative Extension's Demonstration Pollinator Paradise Garden ready for spring. You can view the photos and read all about it on the Growing Small Farms website by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 324. Now we're moving on to livestock news. The Chatham County Horse Health Clinic is happening. On Friday, March 15th, 2024, from 1 until 5 p.m. at the Chatham County Agricultural and Conference Center, 1192 U.S. 64 West Business in Pittsburgh. Dr. Natalie Cochran, Chatham County Mobile Veterinarian Services, will be on hand for the Chatham County Horse Health Clinic. Payment is required on site. Cash or check to Chatham County Mobile Vet Services. Appointments are required. To request your appointment, please contact Ginger Cunningham at ginger underscore Cunningham at ncsu.edu or you may give her a call at 919-542-8249. The services available are rabies for $11, five-way $37, West Nile $22, and Coggins Test $29, which is paper form. So don't forget to make your appointment for the Chatham County Horse Health Clinic. Pittsburgh Pesticide Safety School is coming March 19th through the 20th, 2024 at the Chatham County Agricultural and Conference Center, 1192 U.S. 64 West Business in Pittsburgh. This one-and-a-half-day school is in person with instruction occurring between 8.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. on day one and 8.30 until 11.30 a.m. on day two. Only one category session may be chosen since these sessions happen at the same time. Click on the link in the Growing Channel newsletter for pesticide safety school details and additional information, plus the registration link is available for the pesticide school. Alamance County Livestock and Forages agent Lauren Langley provided us some information about upcoming programs that may be of interest to you. Cattle Market Outlook webinar coming March 28, 2024 at 7 p.m. Many factors influence cattle markets, including beef demand, cattle supply, international markets, and climatic condition. Join us to discuss how these subjects have influenced markets and how they are likely to impact the market moving forward. You can register online by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. 
Save the date for Piedmont Forage Growers Conference coming up April 17th from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. in Seagrove, North Carolina. Discussion will include advanced topics in general forage management, forage species selection, and soil fertility. We will also visit a bell grazing demonstration site. You can click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to register. Alamance Community College is offering a new class Backyard Chickens. Learn how to properly raise and care for layers and broilers. You can sign up today by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Classes begin March 14th and run through May the 2nd. This is every Thursday from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. If you should have any questions, you can contact Victoria Rands at 336-506-4322. Now we're heading into the forest with some forestry news. Rowan County Forestry Field Day is coming up March 14th from 9.30 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. at the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Rowan County Center in Salisbury. Registration is $20 per person. Lunch and transportation during the field tour will be provided. Join Nathan Gatlin, Western Area Specialized Agent in Forestry with North Carolina State Extension for a forestry field tour in Rowan County to showcase practices such as a site preparation, tree planting, thinning and prescribed burning. For more information and to access the event bright registration link, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. Coming up March 5th, from 1 until 2 p.m., Silvo Pasture producers share their stories and answer questions. A panel discussion. This is a webinar. Advanced registration not required. Learn from the experiences of various Silvo Pasture producers in this final webinar of the six part series. This panel discussion will be a question and answer format where participants can ask their burning questions. Each producer in the series will have presented their story in an earlier webinar. And in this webinar discussion, follow up with your questions. This is the sixth webinar in a six-part series targeted toward landowners, farmers, producers, and natural resource professionals. For more information, you can click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Silvo Pastures in North Carolina. What have we learned? Dr. Miguel Castillo, North Carolina State University Associate Professor in Grassland Science Specialist, explains how silvo pastoral systems function as a type of agroforestry marked by the intentional integration and management of trees, forages, and the livestock. Silvo pastures have been broadly accepted as an integrated approach to sustainable land management while providing options to mitigate and adapt to climate change. You can learn more about this research conducted by Dr. Castillo and his colleagues at facilities at North Carolina State University by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Coming up March 15th from 2 until 4 p.m., a webinar exploring succession and estate planning, a panel discussion. Join Penn State Extension Specialist and North Carolina State Extension Specialist Dr. Kurt Smith to learn about the issues associated with heirs, properties, and land succession planning, also called estate or legacy planning. Participants will learn strategies for succession planning and successfully transitioning land ownership to maintain forest health, land ownership, and minimize family conflict. For more information, you can click on the link by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 324. Family and Consumer Sciences agent Tara Gregory shares some home nutrition information with us. Knife Skills Workshop coming up March 26th at 12 p.m. The price is $10. Get a grip on one of the most important tools in your kitchen. This workshop is designed for a hands-on learning experience. Participants will learn about commonly used knives, various types of cuts, and will practice safe cutting techniques. Bring your own knives from home or try out a variety of knives in the teaching kitchen. Each participant will take home a start base of ingredients ingredients for homemade vegetable soup. You can register by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Space is limited to 12 participants, so don't delay. Register today. From the Extension at Home series, Cooking with Ease, Tips, Tools, and Gadgets. Learn about some helpful kitchen items that make cooking more accessible on March 12, 2024 at 12 p.m. This is a free class. You can register online 
by clicking on the register sign in the flyer when you visit the growing Chatham newsletter. Exploring the rich tapestry of Nordic cuisine. Nordic cuisine rooted in the culinary traditions of five distinct countries, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, and Iceland presents a fascinating journey through simplicity, tradition, and a deep connection with nature. Despite their individual identities, these nations share remarkable similarities in their approach to food, reflecting a shared heritage and landscape. To delve into the essence of the Nordic cuisine, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter, where you can find out more information as well as recipes that Tara has provided this month. The recipes are root vegetable soup and peach cod with grated horseradish. You can get these recipes by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 324. Now we're heading over to home finances. This month we're discussing estate planning. Protect yourself, your loved ones, and your assets. This estate planning program is through Utah State University. This estate planning is a set of legal documents that protect you, your loved ones, and your assets. Estate planning goes beyond simply having a will. An estate plan will also cover issues like who receives guardianship and custody of your children or who makes medical decisions for you if you're unable to do so. The most important reason to have an estate plan is to make sure that what you want is clear and your requests are honored now and even after you pass away. Download the free toolkit in the Growing Chatham newsletter that Utah University provides. This 40-page toolkit is designed to help you begin the estate planning process. It is not intended to substitute for legal advice, but it is intended to clarify some of the documents involved in estate planning so that you can determine what you would like to accomplish with your own estate plan. The toolkit includes documents and checklists to provide further assistance and protection protection for you and your assets. And what can you get out of the toolkit if you do download it? You will be able to download the documents so that you can gather the information and securely store and organize the important documents needed for the efficient planning of your own estate plan. The link is available to download your free estate planning toolkit from Utah State University in the growing Chatham newsletter. As we continue with our Century Farms in Chatham County series, this month we listen in on Britt and Lenora Norwood as they reminisce about their childhood memories and growing up on the Norwood family farm. I was supposed to take care of Mary and Britt, and Britt was just 17 months younger than me, so then by the time we got 10 or 11, he was, you know, we were the same size about, you know, he was which was a real, I don't know how old we were, because I was probably 10 or 12 in this one, and I'm still, I remember it bothered me when he got taller, because I thought I was the oldest when I was supposed to be the tallest. Yeah. Um, heated with firewood. We, yes, we did heat with firewood, and would go down to the woodshed, which was about back, right, back, right where back shed there, is to get wood. Chicken coops, well not, what do you call it? chicken nests in the back of the woodshed mm-hmm. where the chickens laid eggs. Mm-hmm. So I, I got, that was one of my duties was gathering the eggs until we stuck my hand in there and there was a black snake. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't look forward to gathering the eggs like that. Resigned from that job. <laughs> I looked forward to getting the eggs more than I enjoyed getting the wood and bringing it to the house. I always enjoyed milking cows and feeding the calves. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there anything you disliked? Clean out the barn. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't ever have to. If y'all were in 4-H, I'm sure I have stuff on you guys, and I don't even know it. You we were in 4-H. I was in 4-H. I was in 4-H. In fact, we grew up um, two years. We had a cow, yeah. a cow, and then a... Then a um, like a bull that you, what steer, sh- and that we steer. showed at the fair. Mm-hmm. And th- now that was something else on cold, mo- cold, cold mornings. I didn't look forward to getting up and feeding the steer before we <laughs> before going to school, but we did. <laughs> I didn't brushed it, and but Britt got to spend the night with the steer when or whenever we showed it. I couldn't spend the night because I was a girl. You know, it was not appropriate for girls. <laughs> Do you know about what year that was? Oh my goodness, uh, let's think. Of 1955, 56, okay. somewhere in there. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it would have been yeah, about mid. I don't have any pictures. I tried th of us with our. You know, we just didn't take a lot of yeah. pictures then because they were. One, you had to buy the film, and then um, then you sent it off to get. So you you just didn't snap like yeah. you do when you have this. <laughs> and you really you really dressed. You were supposed to dress up. We wouldn't have thought of taking a picture. You know as we were. Right. A fun thing that we did, and I don't remember exactly where Britt was, uh, but my cousin came to sort of stay with Britt and me and our younger sister, Mary, who was six years younger, while, so Mother could go pick strawberries. She was born in December, so this was strawberry season, late May, as I remember. So we're warming up, and we decided to, get, to help out our mother. We'd give her a bath, and so we took the bath water, the soap and the oil and the powder and down to the, we thought the horse trough would be a nice place to give her a bath. We drained all the water out, had a corn cob drain, we drained all the water out, had moss in the bottom, we said that'd be just so wonderful for the baby. And of course we didn't dawn on us that we didn't have hot water and just cold water coming into the trough. And after we got all the water drained out then we put the the, the soap, the baby bath soap in there. We had the water in, then we put the baby, put our baby <laughs> sister down in there. And she had towels, we had everything down where the horse trough was. And we thought we'd done such a good deed, but when my father found out about it, we had soap and powder in the horse trough, he was so upset. <laughs> But she was clean, the horse trough, <laughs> horse trough had baby oil. <laughs> Is that where you get the baby the bath? I get the baby the bath. <laughs> Our baby sister. <laughs> so, um, but growing up on a farm afforded you opportunities. You just don't have horse troughs on a small <laughs> lot in town. Everything. Do you remember, I guess that was the most upset Daddy ever got at us when we were in the wheat field over would be to the left of the, it's now the cow pasture, but the wheat was tall, <laughs> taller than our heads. Yeah. So we pushed down a hole, we went into the field and then we just pushed all this wheat down, made rooms, yes. you know, a dining room and a kitchen and a bedroom. <laughs> and we just had the grandest playhouse in that wheat field and thought we, we just couldn't wait to tell our parents about it. Well, daddy was not so pleased because <laughs> we had, you know, destroyed his crop. Yeah. That part of, you know, probably. But we had a grand house built because we had this little path that went in, and then, then we pushed down all, the, trumped it down, mashed it down with our feet, and um, I don't remember him being more upset because he didn't get upset really, I mean, real easily. And but he was upset with us. Taking water, do you remember taking water to the fields yeah, when yeah. we were younger, and too yeah. probably too young to work in the fields, but when they were working in the fields on the river bottoms. Mm -hmm. One of Brits and my responsibilities was taking water down to the, where they were working. It seemed like a long walk. You I know, remember the water. first time I ever openly prayed. That's right. Going down there, there was a black snake crossing the path. I said, God, don't let that snake get me. Yeah, that snake I, I was going off. I went on by. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That is the truth. I always thought Brit had a close connection because because <laughs> I was we were scared to death. But, um, it was a big snake all the way across the road. And I said, Britt, what are we going to do? And Britt said, God, don't let that snake bother us. And the snake just went off. And <laughs> and we, so I thought, okay. And I, <laughs> but we carried, uh, Mother would put ice in a gallon jar. And we'd carry the, or two, a half gallon. We'd have, we'd have a of, quart jar for daddy with uh, buttermilk and egg and raw egg. Or sometimes we would carry that too. We'd, we'd put it up in there and you know, that'd give him energy. Yeah, give them some protein and calcium for, <laughs> and, and water. Another thing when we grew tobacco, and we didn't grow tobacco many years after my mother started back teaching school, well, then we didn't. Maybe 52. 52. I was telling Ed last night, the thing I remember, I loved to work down in, at the, under the tobacco shed you know, because the, the people who helped us were just always so entertaining to me. And so I liked to be down there with them. Mm -hmm. And the ladies who helped, would stand on one leg, which has nothing to do with farming, but I was charmed by the way they'd stand on one leg and put the other leg up on their knee, put their <laughs> foot up on their knee. I just thought that was the coolest thing. Wow. So, but I was not allowed to do that. You know, that was oh, no. not, not ladylike. 
<laughs> so, but so, but anyway, when I think that my father wasn't looking, and we were, hand, and I, my job was handing tobacco. I don't know how old I was, probably seven or eight, nine. I don't know, but I was handing tobacco, putting the leaves together, and then handing it like he was supposed to. Well, I would look around to see if he was looking, and if he wasn't looking, I would put my my foot up on my <laughs> knee like they were doing, because I thought it was cool. Okay. And I don't know how he had eyes in the back of his head, but he'd come by and go like that. <laughs> stand on your two feet. <laughs> you know, kind of sort of under his breath because mm -hmm. he didn't want to hurt the feelings of yeah. those that I was standing beside. Yeah. But um, I remember just thinking that was the mm -hmm. coolest thing. And they were fast, you know, they could just really oh, work fast. Yeah. But standing on one leg. Now, so, did y'all take the tobacco to Durham or? Yeah. yeah. We did, to the tobacco to warehouse. In Durham. Warehouse in Durham. Mm -hmm. And you said the original well house was in the same spot as this one was. Mm -hmm. That's the old well that's in that there the now. Old that old rock wall around yeah. it. That's the old well. I remember you wow. said one time you got lowered down in that well. I did. Had to be cleaned out. Did it tied a rope around my chest, put me on the windlass and let me down in there. I took a bucket down there and cleaned all the leaves and stuff out of the bottom of it and brought me back up. Because it was a ways to how many feet down? 65. Oh, golly. Mm -hmm. That's claustrophobic. Yes. <laughs> by, the, by the time it needed again, I was big enough to say no. <laughs> I ain't going down in that well no more. <laughs> We've come to another end of Growing Chatham. Don't forget to visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to access the links, the videos, and the articles by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham three, two, four. I'll be back in April with more updates from our North Carolina Cooperative Extension Agents. Until then, have a great March. Take care. I'm Tiffany Hancock for North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center.